Good Monday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come again together with you today to share from God's Word uh, as we go through the door for the day. Thankful for all of you who uh, watch and support this ministry. Uh, we are co-laborers in Christ together, getting God's Word out to the world. As I often try to say, if you can, press the like button. Uh, it is good for the algorithm on social media. And today, the thought for the day goes to Titus chapter 3. And as I came to verses, in the context, verses 9 to 11, it speaks about people who cause division. Um, I wanted to speak about division. Sometimes division is good, and sometimes it's bad. The division that is good is when we divide ourselves from the things of this world. We are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, Abraham was told to get out of Ur the Chaldees and to separate himself from the people that he knew and to go to a land that God was calling him to go to. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth, he learned about uh, his message bringing not so much peace, at all. it brought a sword, it brought division. In Mark chapter 3, verse 21, we read that even those that were closest to him thought he was out of his mind, they thought he was crazy. John chapter 7, verse 5 reminds us that those in Christ's own household, those of his own family close to him, didn't believe in him. By the grace of God, thankfully, after the resurrection, many of his loved ones did come to faith in him. As Lord and Savior but we read oftentimes that Christ when he walked this earth was a man who had to learn and we need to learn to divide ourselves from the, the people of this world and Christ told us in Matthew chapter 23 he gave us the seven woes to the Pharisees oftentimes we need to separate ourselves from from self-righteous people we need to be careful though that Although we are to divide ourselves and be separate from the world, when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be unified. Psalm 133 is a beautiful psalm. It's only three verses. If you get a chance, you can read it, where it speaks about how blessed it is when brothers and sisters in Christ are unified. The Apostle Paul, when he walked this earth, had much to say, especially to the Corinthian church. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, he reminded us, he implored them to be unified. There was much division in that church. And why, did, why is there so much division? Well, I've seen in my own life as a young Christian being guilty of causing a ruckus at times in church or my own family or friends. And I could tell you from the word of God, the authority of God's word, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19 says, In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20 tells us, To be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. I've seen in churches where I've been in now for many years, and the church I'm in now, I've been in by the grace of God, and it's a good Bible-believing church for the last over 22 years now. People who have caused divisions are often those that speak a lot, have a lot to say. Their words are many, and in James chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, we're reminded that these words come from a heart that is envious, jealous, bitterness. They have a lot of anger. Maybe they desire a position that someone else has in the church or just a personality conflict with somebody in the church that has authority. But the bottom line is, is that divisions come from within. It comes from wanting what somebody else has. And it comes from people who have a lot to say. Christ, we are told in Mark chapter 15, verse 3, despite all the pain and suffering he was going through between the Garden of Gethsemane, being mocked and scourged by the Roman soldiers, being crucified on a cross, all the pain that he went through it says that he remained silent silence is not a form of weakness meekness is not weakness meekness is a sign of self-control it's power under control christ could have snapped his fingers 
and destroyed the whole Roman Empire, all the soldiers. He could have snapped his fingers and avoided the cross and destroyed all his enemies. But he set the example for us to follow. Humility, being able to be self-controlled, gentle, in the midst of maybe at times when things are going on in our lives that, that we don't agree with, in your family life, at your job, where you want to say something, but you refrain from saying it, think, knowing that it might cause division. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times we should speak up. And on my platform here on social media, I accept all criticism. If I say something that is heretical or against the Bible, please feel free to inbox me. If I've done something wrong or said something wrong, um, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1 tells us that a gentle answer turns away a man's wrath, but grievous words stir up strife. You see, it's not what we say, it's how we say it. When we come with a spirit of gentleness and true concern for that other person, they will listen to us. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 and 6 reminds us, Open rebuke is better than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reminds us that there's a time and a place for everything under the sun. And in verse 7, it reminds us there's a time to rent and a time to sow. Rent basically means a time to tear apart, separate. Sow has to do with planting, cultivating, causing something to grow. There are times when we need to separate from others. In a church, if you're not happy, I encourage you to maybe write a letter to your pastor and say, I, I just respectfully want to go to another church. Don't stay there and cause division. Um, here on social media, people have freedom. They can inbox others and, and, and be free to say what they want. Um, but I encourage people to be really careful of your words. As I said before, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. If you go on and on and on and on about your point and you don't listen to what the other person has to say, it causes division. I had this problem the other day with a, a man who I grew up with. And he was talking about that the Trinity is a false doctrine. And he's going on and on and on and on. He wouldn't let me speak. I had to basically humbly and you know respectfully say, I got to go. We can't talk no more. And had to end the conversation. It was just leading into an argument. When you don't let the other person speak, and you always have to have the last first word, the middle word, and the last word, that is not a constructive conversation. This is going to cause division. It's going to cause problems. Learn to listen to what the other person has to say. Respect the other person's opinion. I hope today's devotional video, my brothers and sisters in Christ today, will remind us to be very careful of what's in our hearts. From the heart the mouth speaks, we need to be careful the words that come out of our mouths. Uh, as soon as you, and I've learned this on social media, as soon as you say something and you send it, there's no taking it back. It goes viral. We need to, we need to be careful that they were not causing division. The only time we should be divided, as I said, is when we divide from the things of this world, the people of this world. But when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be unified, build each other up. There's enough tearing down in this world. And let us learn the blessedness of learning to be together in harmony with one another. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll see this devotional video today. Lord, forgive me. Forgive any of us who have caused divisions in the past. As I said, whether it be in our uh, personal lives, at work, with our family, friends, our church. Lord, help us to be people of unity. Help us to be silent, Lord God. Only speak up if there's something being heretically said in the word, from the Word of God. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.